This afternoon, I have the pleasure of speaking with Ms. Tony McNeil or Elder Tony. She wears many, many hats. She's been referred to as many things, all great and good and wise. Um, so Tony, you know, we've had an opportunity to get together and get to know each other a little bit through the Black Health Agenda work, but wanted to, since you're the, our member highlight for the, this newsletter, wanted to give folks an opportunity um, who may be watching this video to get to know you a little bit better and talk about all the amazing work that you've done in Stockton, maybe other parts of California too. So uh, tell us who Tony McNeil is, what it is you do, why you do what you do and how you really like made your mark here in California. Mm, that's a big question. Okay. Uh, so who I am, um, I am a native born and raised in Stockton, California. Um, I've never resided anywhere else. Um, didn't even think that I was going to be here all the days of my life, but, um, but I am a true Stocktonian for real. Um, I'm a mother of four adult children. Amazing. Um, love them. And so um, they are my stars um, and jewels and treasures. They're the things that I got right, right? Even while they're trying to figure <laughs> out how to do life, they say, I did right. I got it right. Um, I'm an elder, um, an ordained elder in the faith community. Um, and um, my 100% full-time ministry is community organizing, uh, which then is the trade, right? Your gift makes room for you. And my gift eventually led me to the path of community organizing, which I did not do all my life. Um, but then I found out I was an organizer all my life. Um, and so I advocate for social injustices. Um, I educate um, um, people around um, their um, civic engagement rights. Um, and, and, um, and I equip people um, with the tools that they need in order to do the work and to get involved in this work. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm jack of all trades. So I work with all gamuts of folks. Um, and my primary focus surrounding organizing um, is around, um, we call it live free work, um, restorative justice work, transformative work. So um, I, I bridge in between clergy and those that are directly impacted uh, from formerly incarcerated population, um, gun violence reduction work, um, you know, exposing the prison industrial complex. Um, now I'm starting to branch out <clears throat> into areas of health disparities, right? Within the black community. Oh my gosh, the more I learn about that thing. Um, Which is how we came together. Yes, yes. And that's how we connected. And yes. police accountability. <laughs> I'm sorry, say that again. I can't leave police accountability off the table. Police accountability. Okay. Yes, yeah. So now, you know, everybody has a story about how they ended up doing this work. So what is your story and what led you on this path to do the work that you've been doing um, and having an impact on the community? Um, so first of all, I'll say that um, I, I do have a personal skin in the game. So my self-interest um, is probably most, more than um, not centered in my upbringing, um, my personal journey and some of the hurdles and things I've overcome when it was from domestic violence and, um, you know, and just some of the final, uh, the, the family, uh, the familial structures that I've seen, some generational things that we weren't able to get out of. Mm -hmm. um, and then looking at my, uh, my generation, those that were born, you know, within that 10 year span of 1969 and, um, and, and the mid 70s um, and our journey um, through, you know, the prison industrial complex and the birth of that and drugs in our communities, you know, and the um, three strike laws and different things that just decimated our communities, our families uh, just ripped them to shreds and blew them up. <laughs> um, so, you know, looking at those things, my teenage years, my young adult years, some of the things that I wanted, I wanted to create a fork in the road for my children. I wanted to give them an opportunity to not have to, if they chose not to, right? Go through some of the things that I went through because I did not have someone to blaze another trail, you know, for me. Um, right. And so I wanted to do something different. And as they, and, and I, as I started doing that, Rhonda, I started seeing my 
children advocate for themselves, right, in school, you know, I have a right, I'm not going to sign this because I don't agree with it, you know, and I'm like, wait, where did that voice come from? When they got older, what they started kind of reflecting back to me in the mirror, oh, this voice came from you, you know, mommy, you gave us the right to stand up and say, you are the one that said that we should, you know, advocate for ourselves. And I was like, hmm, you know, so as I started kind of progressing and moving along, I realized that I was fighting for the underdog always, that I was always beating up the bully that was beating up the underdog, you know, that I was always standing in between in the cuts and stuff. I didn't know how to really advocate for me, you know, um, and so I was taking the beating. However, because I was taking a beating, it created this this, this really, really strong, you know, thing in me that said, but I don't want to see anybody else have to endure what it is that I'm having to endure. Right. So the more that I've learned, um, the, the more that I, I, I begin to equipping and empowering. So first we help you, you know, in order to deal with the crisis. But if you really don't want to have to repeat this crisis, let me now build you and equip you with tools so that you can create a fork in the road for yourself and others. Great. Um, so you do a lot of this work through Faith in the Valley, right? Is that correct? Yes. Yes. That's so, my so, full-time day job. That's your full-time job. So tell us a little bit about Faith in the Valley, your mission, your presence, and all the things that you've done through that organization. Yeah, so Faith in the Valley is actually the organization that I very I first started organizing with by trade, right? Who knew you could get paid to do a thing? <laughs> right? um, so I started off as a as a faith community leader, um, and then eventually left my state job, you know, and and said I'm going to do this, you know, um, and begin this journey. We are a nonprofit uh, faith-based organization. We um, organize throughout the Central Valley. Uh, we hold space in the San Joaquin County, Merced, or Stanislaus County, Merced County, Fresno County, and Kern County. Um, we have um, hundreds of uh, congregations um, that we uh, develop relationship with. We build, you know, organizing. Um, relationships with, we do organizing within those um, or faith-based institutions. Um, and it's many different faiths. So it's not just limited to Christianity, you know, Muslim practice, um, um, you know, uh, Catholic. So it's just broad, faith-based. And we build leaders. We equip people with the tools and the resources that they need in order to empower their voice to make systemic and structural changes within their community based on their will based on their wants. Um, we do heavy duty listening in our communities in order to find out you know, what are some of the uh, main issues that are taking place. And then we, um, and we build on that. We, we go through process. We put people in places with their, um, with their elected officials you know, um, and, and help them to lift up their voice and to make those different changes and stuff. Yeah, so one of the things that you mentioned is about tackling some of the structural issues. And, you know, I don't know a whole lot about Stockton, but what little bit I do know, you know, it's a very special place, right? And so, yeah, just wanted to know, like, how have you been able to tackle some of those issues in Stockton, given the, like, landscape and dynamics there? So I want to try to tread through this not super fast in my brain. Stockton mm -hmm. is unique. Um, the Central Valley is unique when it comes to its approach around in organizing. It is not for the faint of heart because one, it's the Central Valley is already conservative. Um, and because we are surrounded by sundown cities, right? Historically, um, there is not, um, there hasn't been a muscle that has really been built to, to really oppose those systemic structural changes that have been historically. So what do, you, what do you mean by sundown city? Oh yeah. So that means that, um, yeah, <laughs> back in the day, you, um, that you knew that as the sun came down and you were black or a person of color, you better leave that city and not be caught by yourself there. You need to mm. go home. Um, and so Stockton is nestled in between sundown cities historically. 
um, Lodi, you know, uh, Linden, <laughs> Manteca, all these different places historically were sundown cities. And Stockton was a place, you know, historically where you had a lot of your most marginalized immigrant workers that were nestled right here. Stockton is a town trying to become a city. Um, and so now you've got, you know, migration from the Bay Area and different folks that have been pushed out um, that have migrated here in this city. So you've got city folks living in this town and now this town's trying to gentrify in order to accommodate the city folk, um, but it still has that historical structure and mindset of a sundown city, you know? So right. it's difficult for people to engage in organizing, which means we have to develop relationships. We need to understand our elected, we need to really lean in and, and understand, you know, who, um, who actually the visible and the invisible power structures are. Who, who makes the decisions, you know? So if the mayor is the visible power, who is the people that fund the mayor? and develop those relationships. We need to ensure that the mayor is clear on what his role is. And as we approach it, don't approach it from a posturing of, I don't like the personality type. No, we're approaching the position. We're approaching the seat, not the person. And we're then holding the seat account of the person accountable to, to fulfill the roles of the seat. That's the, that's the unique organizing um, of integrity in which we attempt to approach um, from Faith in the Valley. Oh, cool. So now of all your years and of all the work that you've done, um, what is like the one or two things that you've learned or maybe have taken away from that that you can share with others who may be interested in doing this work or on the path to doing this work or steeped in this work like you are? Um, yeah, the first, my first thing is it's, it's about the people. It's not about me as an organizer. This isn't about me. You, you better be called to this work. You better really know how, that, know that, you know, that this is what you have a heart to do. Um, and that you're not looking for a pat on the back, a reward, you know, status and notoriety. This is about the people true organizing starts from the ground and works its way up. It does not start from the top and work its way down. That's transactional organizing. True organizing, relational organizing is that the people are looking to you to be a voice of integrity, one, that you're really saying what it is that the people are saying, um, and that when you're giving them information surrounding structural change, that you are trusting that they can make their own informed decision. And you're not trying to lead them into decision making. You don't have an agenda. Your agenda is them. They are your agenda. Right. So that's kind of like meeting people where they are and at the same time, empowering people and uplifting them to give them a voice. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And so we've had the pleasure of working together again on the Black Health Agenda. I want to thank you for being part of that process and helping to, you know, make that event that we did back in February a truly a success. We look forward to continuing to work with you to affect some change around health disparities and other things that um, are really affecting the community, the Black community in particular in, uh, in Stockton and all of San Joaquin County. So if someone wanted to get in touch with you or want to learn more about all the work that you do or Faith in the Valley, what's the best way to get in touch with you? Oh, email me. Um, <laughs> you want to share your email with everybody? <laughs> yes. Um, you can email me at Tony, that's T-O-N-I, at faithinthevalley.org. So okay. just that simple. And okay. email. So no talking. social media, no TikTok or anything like that. I mean, you know, it's, it's, I feel like that's like, it's so overrated. So I try to keep it so simple. Um, I'm Facebook, Tony McNeil, you know, right. Right. <laughs> um, on Twitter, Queen Status. Um, the same for Instagram, queen, queen status underscore 101. Um, and you have certainly deserved that title and all the work that you've done and all the, I'm sure you've raised more than just the four children that you've had, right? So um, <laughs> yes, 
Yeah. So, so thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today. And uh, we'll look forward to working with you and partnering with you going forward. So thanks thank again. You. Right. Thank you.